This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to look at freeform curves. Freeform curves will be the curves that you're going to use to draw nice swoopy design shapes, and especially if you're looking at going into any sort of transportation design, you'll spend a lot of time drawing with freeform curves. There are four main types of freeform curves available in Rhino 5, and we'll go ahead and look at all four of those. And as I'm drawing with them, I'm going to show you why there's really kind of one that's better than the other four, and probably the one that you should learn to do most of your drawing with. To access the freeform curve menu, simply go up to the menu, select curve, freeform, and as you can see, there are the four options here. I'm going to do these out of order just a little bit. The first one I'll select is handle curve. And I'm going to draw similar shapes with all four of these curves, just to give you a better idea of the differences. Now, handle curve, if any of you have spent much time drawing in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, it's going to be one that you feel very comfortable with. It draws in a very similar way. You click a control point, and then you drag out handles to control the shape. It's a great way to draw, but it's not a particularly efficient way to draw for three-dimensional drawing. And we'll look at why in just a few moments. So as I said, I'm going to kind of draw a similar shape. It won't be exact. We'll draw sort of this modified kidney bean shape, and I'll type C at the end of each one to close them. So that's the handle curve. The next one we'll draw with is control point curve. Freeform, control point curve. Control point curve can be a little strange to draw with, but it really is the best of the curves here once you get used to how to draw with it. You actually do spend quite a bit of time editing it after you draw to get the shapes perfect but it gives you really kind of the cleanest of all the lines here. Click again, I'll hit C and enter to close that curve. The next one we'll look at is interpolated. Again, I go to curve, freeform, interpolate points. This one's strange because you're clicking dots or points out in space that it matches the curve to. So it can be a little bit hard to control but you are still able to get a fairly decent quality line with it. And the last one we'll look at is Sketch. This is probably the hardest of all to control. With this one, you're going to click once with the mouse and draw your shape. So if your mouse control is not really nice and steady, then your curve is not going to be a nice curve. Let me go ahead and draw this. As you can see, I just hold down the cursor, drag it around, So you can see with that one, I was able to get a decent line, but I was not able to close those lines up perfectly. And if I switch on the control points for that one, you'll see there's quite a lot of control points. So I would say for the most part, these bottom two options, interpolate and sketch, are really kind of out of the running. Let me go ahead and lock those. So I really wouldn't consider those. The two main types of curves you'll want to look at drawing with or again, handle curve if you're coming from an Adobe Illustrator background, or control point curve, which is what I use and I recommend you use for probably 99.9% .9 of what you're drawing. And the main reasons are, are this. With the handle curve, although it's, an, again, a nice, comfortable, familiar way to draw, it adds extra control points in order to give you those handlebars to control the shape. Let me just select both of these, and then I'll come down here and turn control points on. And here you can see a difference pretty immediately. You can see if we go from this lower corner up to the top, we have one, two, three, four, five, six curves being used. And here I have three, maybe four. So right away we have two less control points. To handle this little dip, here I have five control points. And here it's handled with three control points. And that kind of goes on and on around the whole shape. And if I select all these points here, it'll give me a point count. So the shape on the right is using 11 control points or curve points to draw it. The shape on the left is using 18. That may not seem like a big difference. But what you have to remember is this is actually the very first step 
of the 3D design process. So right off the bat, before you do anything else, you've already got a lot more control points and a lot more complexity in your initial curve that your shape or surface is going to be based off of. And this can have an impact later on when you start doing things like fillets, splits, Boolean differences, and all sorts of three-dimensional building strategies that we look at later on have the possibility or may have the possibility to fail because of the excess number of control points or how strangely the control points are interpreted by the different commands. So as I said, I highly recommend learning to draw with the control point freeform curve. All right, let me switch these control points off. I'll just hit escape twice. It turns off the control points. And let's just move this forward just a little bit so you get an example of what I'm talking about as far as how we move down the 3D process and, and what a difference these two different curves will make. So let me just click on perspective. So we have our two curves here. And I'm just going to take these curves and do a simple extrusion with them. So I'll go to surface, extrude curve, straight, and I'll just drag these up. And I'll go ahead and shade this view. So as we look at these, they look fairly similar. In fact, you might even say that this one, just based on the number of UV curves, actually looks a little simpler than the control point based extrusion. Let me just select these. I'll hit explode to change them from an extrusion just to surfaces. And when I click on this one, I can turn the control points on for it. And now I can drag these control points. And just by moving control points, you can see I can easily edit this shape. Move these surfaces all around and really kind of tweak this to however best fits my design. So I come over here to the surface based off of the handle curve and click on it. You can see instantly it's broken the surface up into three different pieces. So if I edit the control points on these, it's going to start to pull apart and I'm not going to be able to join it together after I've manipulated it. If I select these parts and click on the jigsaw puzzle icon here for join and try to turn on the control points, you'll see the command line telling me you can't turn on control points for poly surfaces. So the only way I can adjust this is to explode it. And like I said, it's going to cause us problems later on and the whole thing will start to deform as we work with it. And this is actually only the second step of working with this curve and you can see it's already giving us some trouble. So again, I highly recommend learning how to work with the control point freeform curve. It actually is fairly easy to use and it gives you much cleaner results. And that concludes our initial look at freeform curves.